Right, so uh, we started looking at uh, the way in which a non-uniform distribution equalizes, becomes uniform as a function of time, essentially the diffusion problem in the context of the Boltzmann equation. And we had a whole lot of symbols on the board, mm -hmm. but let me go over it again and then we will complete what, where we were getting at. So if you recall, uh, we want to look at the distribution, we want to look at f of r v t on time scales where the velocity is essentially thermalized. That is where the diffusion regime is, okay, although we are not explicitly saying so. So we would like to ask what happens if the velocity distribution is Maxwellian essentially, but the positional distribution is a function of time, starts with some initial given prescribed distribution and then it obviously is a function of time due to diffusion, it equalizes. We are trying to understand that process and understand the time scale which appears in the problem when you try to, to find out how it goes to this equilibrium situation. So the equation we wrote for f was delta over delta t plus there is a v dot del and that is definitely present this term del r is definitely present because we are trying to find out how this function of r changes. Okay. So this times f plus an external force but that is 0, there is no external force. So f over m dot grad v, this term acting on f, this term is absent. And this is equal to on the right hand side minus 1 over tau times f of r v and t minus whatever it relaxes to, whatever the system relaxes to. Remember that when we looked at the Langevin problem in phase space, one particle phase space, I said that beyond the diffusion time the joint probability density in phase space factorizes into a portion which was essentially Maxwellian times a portion which satisfied the diffusion equation. I did not set it equal to constant, so it satisfies the diffusion equation and we are trying to see if that emerges here. Okay. So that is the point that you raised and that is the what we are looking for. We are trying to find out what happens there. Just to, just to recall to you, we had a row there we had a row of r, v and t and we said that when t much, much, much greater than gamma inverse in the Langevin model, in this case, this went to some probability distribution r t times the Maxwellian. So, in the velocity. That is the, that's the one that, uh, that is what we discovered in the diffusion limit and then we found out what is the equation satisfied by this quantity here. So it is in that spirit that this is being done. So what we need here is an n of r comma t times w of v which is the Maxwellian distribution. So just to set uh, your uh, normalizations, remember that f uh, of r v t, if you integrate this over r and n uh, v, you end up with the number density finally. So this quantity here, f equilibrium, this goes to f equilibrium of v that is the absolute uniform distribution in space. So this is equal to n, a constant, and it is just the number density, a constant, times w of v, which is the Maxwellian.
the Gaussian distribution in V with a variance which proportional to k t, okay. So that is what is sitting here except that it is not the equilibrium distribution we are going to. We are trying to find out what is this distribution here. So our target is actually to find out what this quantity is. Well, if t tends to infinity in the solution of the diffusion equation, everything becomes 0 in an infinite volume. Here everything will become a uniform distribution, 1 over the volume. That is not very interesting, right. We are trying to find out what is the mode by which, what is the time scale, that is really what we are trying to do. So we put in a time scale here and we are trying to see how this time scale is going to play a role in controlling the time scale on which the thing equalizes. Okay. But of course, we must also look at another fact which is that uh, when you have a non-uniform distribution and you do a, a Fourier transform in space, you have all wave numbers. So you can resolve it into sinusoidal fluctuations on all length scales, on all wave numbers, right. Now the question is how does that play a role? So clearly the relaxation time is going to depend on the wave number itself. So there can't be one relaxation time, right? There's got to be a dependence on the wavelength. So a disturbance which is very long wavelength disturbance is going to take a different time to relax than one which is a very sharp wiggle. That's what should come out. Right? So although we put in one constant here, you're going to get a whole family of constants, a continuous family of constants. So it's going to depend on the wave number of the fluctuation. And the question is how? Okay. So, so yeah. There exists a time when uh, velocity reaches the equilibrium distribution, but position does not. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. We can always find. Yes, that. absolutely. Yeah. We already saw what's the time scale on which in this one uh, in this uh, single mode thing. We already saw that this tau is the velocity relaxation time. So now we are looking at time scales much bigger than that tau. But it will depend on what k is, what the wave number is. So this is what we are going to discover, right. We essentially you are going to find a whole family of relaxation times, one for each k. But how does it depend on that k is the question, hmm? okay. So this is the target and now we are in business. So we, let me go through this quickly since we did this already last time. I do a Fourier transform with respect to space and a Laplace transform with respect to time. So essentially we are going to write f of r v t equal to well and 1 over 2 pi whole cubed integral 0 to infinity dt integral d3 r e to the minus st that is the Laplace transform. And then the Fourier transform was uh, e to the minus i k dot r f tilde of k v and s. Oh, what have I done? D3 k and our Fourier transform convention was to put a plus sign there for this k. I should write the inverse transform, let us let me not do that, I mean, <laughs> so let us write f tilde of k, v and s equal to integral from uh, 0 to infinity dt integral d3 r e to the power minus e to the power minus st e to the power uh, minus i k dot r. f of r v and t, okay. Right. And the inverse transform will have a 1 over 2 pi cubed e to the plus i k dot r and this is going to become e to the plus s t over the Millen contour, whatever. So what is going to happen here? d over d t of this guy but this fellow if I write it down is going to pull an i k dot r. So let us without further ado write this down. So we have S times F tilde of uh, K 
V S minus the initial value. Now we made the assumption that the initial distribution f of r v t this quantity is equal to some initial some initial uh, distribution in r at 0 0 multiplied by w of v. That was the assumption we had made, right? So minus, if I take the transform, n initial tilde of k w of v. That's the value of this guy after a Fourier transform in space. And then there's this term; it's going to pull up. V dot whatever del del R acting on uh, this fellow is going to put uh, plus I K dot R. K dot V on F tilde of K V and S. And this is equal to minus 1 over tau f tilde of k v and s on this side plus 1 over tau n tilde of k and s times w of v. Okay. We got all the factors right now. So I bring this, this and this to the left hand side and I have S plus I K dot V plus 1 over tau acting on F tilde of K V and S is equal to. So this term has been taken into account, so has this and so has this. I move this to the right hand side. This is equal to N initial tilde of K plus 1 over tau n tilde of k and s times w of v. So that takes care of this term and this term. Shouldn't there be a what? we are finding the Laplace transform of the derivative, time derivative. So it is the transform of this function minus the value of the function in time at t equal to 0, which is all I have written. But then I did a Fourier transform in space. So all right, right. And so let us move this fellow down here, this thing divided by s plus i k dot v plus 1 over tau and let us multiply both sides by tau so that it is so it is tau times this plus just that is equal to 1 plus s tau plus this guy i tau k dot and this goes to that set. Hmm. Now of course we need to close this set of equa this equation. So what we do is to in integrate over v and I integrate over v and I get precisely n tilde of k and s once I finish integration over v because f of r v t if I integrate over v I get n of r t by definition. So what we have is integral d3 v remember that. So I integrate and Fourier transform. So 
So, I am going to get f tilde of k is n tilde of k comma s if I take Laplace transforms etcetera. Huh? So, this tells you that n tilde of k and s is equal to tau n initial tilde of k whatever that be plus n tilde of k and s here in this bracket times an integral and that integral is integral d 3 v w of v divided by 1 plus s tau plus i tau k dot v. I have to integrate this over v along with that and it comes out. So, let us call this integral something. Let us call this uh, integral i some integral and it is a function of k and s. The b is gone. So, I have 1 minus i k and s times n tilde of k s equal to tau n tilde initial of k. Uh, let me write it properly is equal to tau n initial tilde of k times i of k and s and then divide by this factor 1 minus i of k and s. That is the solution. Okay. Now, everything is known. We know this, it is a Maxwellian. In principle, it is something in the denominator with some kernel. So, once you do this integral, you know this function explicitly. Now, it sits in both places and you know this from the initial distribution. So, therefore, I know the Fourier Laplace transform of n of r comma t of this fellow and that is the one I am trying to find out. Of course, it cannot be inverted analytically. This is a terrible mess. This, uh, this itself is bad and then on top of it you got to put that here and then invert both the Fourier and the Laplace transform. It is an impossible task. Okay. But what are we trying to get? We are trying to find out what happens at long times and what happens on long length scales, the scales on which diffusion occurs. The, the modes, the longest wavelength, uh, the, lo the shortest wavelength, the largest, sorry, smallest k which means longest wavelength, k is the wave number, okay, which is where the diffusive modes are. So, one way to do this is to expand this whole thing in powers of k. This is 1 plus something and you say k is going to be near 0. So, expand this in systematically in powers of k using the binomial theorem and do the first order, second order, etcetera terms. Huh? Now, when you do that, you can see immediately what is going to happen here. So, let us try to expand i of k and s equal to, let us pull this out of the denominator and then do a binomial expansion in powers of k. So, that is independent of v. So, this is 1 over 1 plus s tau and then an integral d 3 v w of v times 1 I am going to pull this out and take this out in the denominator here. So, it is 1 plus something inverse and therefore, it is 1 minus i k dot v i tau. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. 
Oh yeah, 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 precisely. The first, what he is saying is the first order term in K will vanish. All odd things will vanish, yeah. I just want to show you explicitly how that happens. You can see. So, this divided by 1 plus s tau, we must keep the next term because that is the one that is not going to be 0. So, it is 1 plus x inverse which is 1 minus x plus x squared, but then there is a minus sign here because of this guy. So, minus tau squared k dot v the whole squared divided by 1 plus s tau squared plus dot 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 here. Now integral d3 v w of v is 1 because it is a normalized Maxwellian already. So the first term is 1 plus, now this term here has a k dot v. Obviously you should use polar coordinates such that the polar axis is along v. Then this becomes k v cos theta and you will do an integral on cos theta from minus 1 to 1 d cos theta. So that is an odd function and it vanishes. It is obvious from isotropy here. So the first order term is 0. Then this one is the first non-zero term and that is easily evaluated. So you have 1 minus 1 over 1 plus, uh, sorry, so this is equal to 1 over 1 plus s tau minus tau squared k squared divided by 1 plus s tau the whole cubed, there is one factor here and two more there, times an integral d3 v w of v and then a v squared out here hmm, times cos squared theta where theta is a polar angle. I have assumed that we have gone to polar coordinates, spherical polar coordinates in v space and chosen the polar angle, polar direction to be along that of k because that is the vector that is sticking out. Right. So you are going to get a v squared here and then a cos squared theta plus higher orders. Yeah. I just want yeah, I just want to do this in spherical polar coordinates because I do not want to get into Cartesians and count different kinds of integrals. There is only one integral to be done here, right. In fact, I am not even going to do the integral. I am going to leave it to your homework problem. It is a trivial problem. But what I want to do is to extract the temperature dependence of this term. That is crucial. There is temperature sitting there in W of V on the Maxwellian. I want to know what it looks like. That is the, the main point I want to get at, right. So we should keep this. But you see, this term here. What is it going to be? There is first of all in the in the phi direction there is a 2 pi. So first of all this fellow is m over 2 pi k Boltzmann t to the 3 halves. That is the normalization of this w of v. And then there is a v squared dv and then there is a 2 pi from the uh, 2 pi from the phi integration. This is v squared and cos squared theta and cos squared theta is integrated from minus 1 to 1. So it is twice the integral 0 to 1 and then it is twice the integral from 0 to 1 divided by 3. So it is uh, 2 over 3 times 2 pi is 4 pi over 3. That is why I mean it is obvious you are going to get 4 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3 and all that is finished. And then you are left with an integral 0 to infinity dv, there is already a v squared and a v squared, so it is v4 e to the minus mv squared over 2k Boltzmann t. And there is a Gaussian integral with a v4 here, so it is a trivial thing to do. You can change variables to so mv squared over 2kt, 
when you are going to get, uh, if you call that u or something like that, there is going to be a 1 over square root of u and then a u squared, so u to the 3 halves. So there is going to be a gamma of 5 halves, but you can scale this fellow out completely. v squared scales like kt, so this will go like kt whole squared and then there is a 1 over square root of kt here and there is this fellow sitting here. So the sum and substance is there is going to be a kt finally whatever be that constant, some kt over m or something like that. Okay, I leave that to you as a as an exercise. Whatever it is, finally let me write the final answer down. This is a very well known answer. Let me write this down. This fellow, after you put that in, in here and here, and then keep to order k squared, because that is the order to which you cut it off, everywhere except this. So the coefficient of whatever this is correcting this initial distribution has a term which is of the order 1 and then order k squared and so on and so forth. So if you do that, this term here becomes equal to, it looks like the following. Huh? N initial tilde of k. divided by S, S plus a function of S, let me call it D of S times K square. Where I have used this D of S deliberately because it has dimensions of the diffusion coefficient. This fellow has got dimensions of time inverse and this fellow is length to the minus 2. So this whole thing, this therefore must have dimensions L squared over T, which is the dimensions of the diffusion constant. So I called it D of S, but it is a function of S, where D of S equal to and now it is not surprising, you are going to get the temperature dependence from here. So it turns out to be KBT tau over M 1 over 1 plus S tau. You could have sort of guessed some of these things, 1 over 1 plus S tau because that is appearing here, goes with the K squared. So that is the solution. We now you have to tell me what this is and then I have to invert it with this weight, with this weight sitting here. Okay. But now let us see, we are trying to ask how does the initial distribution, whatever it is, how does it diffuse out, okay. It depends on the poles of this out here because when I do an inverse Laplace transform, 1 over S plus lambda has the inverse transform e to the minus lambda t, right. So it is going to depend on k squared out here. Therefore the leading relaxation is going to be of the form for s tau much, much less than 1 because we want long time or small s going to 0, you can neglect this term. So this is going to look like n initial of k tilde divided by s plus d of 0 k squared. And now you know exactly how it is going to relax because I can invert the Laplace transform now. Therefore trivial and it says finally, so it says n of r t and n tilde of k and t, let me leave the k still, is equal to n tilde initial of k e to the minus d k square t 
where d is k Boltzmann t tau over n. So, you see it is typical of what it is exactly what we would expect. Remember in the Langevin model we got k t over m gamma and the velocity correlation time was tau in gamma inverse. Well, here the velocity correlation time is tau in this model and m is the mass of a molecule. Yes. So, the approximation has been sort of gross in that sense that it has become essentially the mass of a molecule, but this tau is completely arbitrary, completely arbitrary. We will just put that in by hand. So, that is the diffusive mode as you can see and you can see it is a Gaussian solution because what is the inverse Laplace, tra inverse uh, Fourier transform of just this guy? If you make this, if you give me a start with the delta function for instance, then this fellow here is a constant. If you give me a delta function in R, this n tilde of k is a constant and then the inverse Laplace transform of k e to the minus k squared, a Gaussian is of course e to the minus r squared again a Gaussian. Now, this Gaussian has a variance 1 over dt and in R it will have a variance proportional to dt. So, you have exactly the diffusive behavior with this diffusion constant d, okay. But it is giving you a lot more information. This thing is telling you much more. It is telling you how other modes relax in principle. So, even though it is a single relaxation time approximation, because of this complicated way in which k appears and s appears, it is actually telling you much more. It is going beyond this diffusion approximation, okay. So, this is how a space dependent relaxation appears. So, first we said the velocity itself, how does it relax given a uniform distribution? We found that was rather trivial. It was like a Kubo Anderson process. Then we said, what happens if you have a non-uniform spatial distribution? Well, it is diffusive. This is called a diffusive mode if you like. Uh, now, let us ask the other question. Suppose the distribution in space is uniform and I start with the equilibrium distribution, but now I switch on an external force. Uh, then what is going to happen? And let us in the simplest case, let us switch on a force which is time dependent but uniform. So, that the uniform distribution in space does not change. However, you put on a force, external force and these particles are going to get dragged. So, I expect the Maxwellian distribution will be disturbed and if the force finally goes to a constant force as a function of time, then the Maxwellian certainly will be distorted sort of intuitively in the direction of that force. Right. So, it, that direction should be singled out and let us see how that happens, okay. And we play the same game and in fact, it is an even easier thing. So, let us do that. So, till now we were looking at problems where you are a little away from equilibrium, you relax to equilibrium, but now I start with the equilibrium and I push it out of it and ask what is the new distribution to which it goes. So, constant uniform. So, I have f of r v 0, the initial thing is the equilibrium distribution, equilibrium of v it is equal to n times w of v, okay. And it is a uniform force. So, uniform force is not going to destroy an initially uniform, spatially uniform distribution is going to remain spatially uniform. So, I do not have to worry about the gradient term with respect to r acting on this thing at all. Then what happens to the equation that we have? So, some force f of t, no r dependence here. So, we have delta f over delta t and this is a function of r, v and t plus f of t over m dot the gradient with respect to the velocity 
here that is important of f of r v t and this guy is equal to minus 1 over tau f of r v t minus f equilibrium of v. So, I want to know how the, the f is moved away from the equilibrium distribution because that is what I started with at t equal to 0. So, this is the difference in the single relaxation time approximation. Okay. So, this is the equation I have to deal with. Now, clearly it is uh, sensible to call this something else equal to some g of r v n t. In particular, I want to compare the answer we are going to get here with whatever we know from linear response theory. Remember in linear response theory, we found the average velocity divided by the applied force, the constant applied force per unit applied force was the mobility. And in the case in which the force was a constant time independent, we got the static mobility. So, we want to see what happens now in this case. But this is completely kinetic. Do we need to carry the R dependence? We do not need to carry the R dependence everywhere because there is no term with respect to this guy. So, we forget about it completely. It is uniform everywhere. So, let us make this f of v comma t, f of v comma t and that is it. No R dependence. The statement is you have a force which is uniform, time dependent, but uniform. You start with an initial uniform distribution, there is nothing which is going to make the distribution non uniform in space. Okay. So, this is what we got to work out, this fellow here. And now let us put that in here. So, you get delta G over delta T plus F of T over M dotted with gradient with respect to V of F equilibrium that is equal to F equilibrium V plus G of V and T. Because F is F equilibrium plus G by definition. Okay. This is equal to minus 1 by tau g of v n okay. we want to compare now that is an exact equation right however we want to compare with what happens when the external force is weak that is the whole idea that you want to compare with linear response theory huh? now it is clear that this g is going to depend on the external force if there is no force this g is 0 identically you remain in equilibrium so, G is going to have a first order term in F, second order, third order, etcetera, etcetera. But if you are going to work to linear response level, then this term F times G is already of second order in G, right. This is the correction which is proportional to F and higher powers and there is already an F here. So, I am going to drop this in preference to this. And then we get uh, delta G to, to first order in F of T. The equation is delta over delta T G, that is this term, plus F of T over M dot the gradient with respect to V of F equilibrium of V equal to minus 1 over tau G. Now, of course, one brings this to this side and that is the same as saying that uh, G of V comma T equal to E to the minus T over tau times something else. Let us call it H of V comma T. Let. I am just removing this integrating factor. So, the first term is minus 1 over tau times G itself and that cancels and then you have E to the minus T over tau delta H over delta T 
equal to minus f of t over m dot gradient v f equilibrium v. So, move e to the t over tau to the right hand side. Now, what is the initial condition? Well, the initial condition on this f was that to start with it was in the equilibrium distribution. So, g of v comma 0 is 0. Therefore, h of v comma 0 is 0. This is the initial condition. And we have a formal solution. And what is the formal solution now? It says h of v t is equal to minus uh, let us take out a 1 over m integral from 0 to t dt prime f of t prime dot gradient v uh, times e to the we should not forget that e to the t prime over tau times f of t prime dotted with gradient with respect to v f equilibrium of v. That is h. So, it says g therefore is e to the minus t over time tau times that. So, this is e to the minus t over tau times that and that is the formal solution for g. f however is f equilibrium plus g. So, it says f of R V T equal to F equilibrium of V minus this guy and that is the solution. We would like to see what happens at long times if I put a constant force. So, what I need to do is to switch on the force by whatever means I like. And a typical way to do this just to get an idea of what the asymptotic behavior is, is to do the following. It is called adiabatic switching and you do this in quantum mechanics for example. When you do perturbation theory, you switch on the force slowly and not suddenly so that all the energy levels do not get jiggled up, but the same spectrum remains but gets slowly perturbed, okay. In the same way, here is a way to switch on the force. So, let us suppose that on the time axis you have here f of t magnitude or whatever, uh, you want to make it go to a constant value. This value is f and let us say you start switching it on at t equal to 0 because we took at t equal to 0 the system to be in equilibrium. And typically what would happen is that you would switch it on it would do this. You can choose any force history you like, but I would like to see what happens at long times here. So, a simple model would be to say that f of t equal to, it should start at 0 and should end up with a capital F which I will put at the end inside. So, 1 minus e to the minus t over some time scale, whatever you call it, let us tau 1. I mean this is typically tau 1, the time scale on which this fellow essentially reaches 1 over e saturation value or something like that, okay. So, that is one way to do this, you put that in here when you integrate, okay. So, what does that get us? So, this fellow here becomes this term, this term alone 
let us look at what happens to this. So, well, let us look at the whole thing. So, if this implies that f, there is no r, f of v t equal to f equilibrium of v and then what? Minus e to the t, e to the minus t over tau that was the relaxation time over n and then the time integral is essentially integral 0 to t dt prime e to the minus t prime over tau 1 minus e to the minus t prime over tau 1 and then there is outside there is an f dot v uh, f dot grad v of f equilibrium of v. This fellow is independent of time, just comes out. Okay. Now, that is a trivial integral to do this whole business. First term is e to the whatever, it is a plus, I think this is a plus, plus t, plus out there. Right. So, this first term is going to give you e to the t over tau minus 1. And when you multiply by this, it becomes 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. The second term has got a smaller term, which is a positive term. So, it is 1 over tau minus 1 over tau 1. If tau 1 is much bigger than tau, for instance, then this term is going to be positive 1 over tau minus 1 over tau 1, but smaller than 1 over tau. Therefore, when you hit it with this, this integral, that part will vanish exponentially. So, the, the sum and substance is the only thing that remains for t much, much greater than tau and tau 1 is f equilibrium of v minus what remains. This is going to give you an e to the t over tau leading term and it is going to kill this. So, you are just going to get 1 over m. f constant dot grad v of f equilibrium of v. What is that going to be? Because remember that f equilibrium of v equal to n times this m over 2 pi k t stuff multiplied by e to the minus m v squared over 2 k Boltzmann t. Now, what is the gradient with of e to the minus r squared in physical space, in three dimensional space? Just d over dr is going to appear and in the direction of r. So, the gradient of r squared is essentially r vector twice or whatever it is. Now, when you differentiate this, it is going to give you a twice and that twice will cancel here and you get to m over k t in the denominator, it's looking starting to look like the mobility as you can see and then there is going to be a piece which is essentially v, right. So, this whole thing is going to look like f dot v apart from some constants, there are some constants which I leave you to figure out and then f equilibrium. So, it is going to become proportional to this. Constant, Pardon me? Constant is m by k b t. Constant is m over k b t. Yeah. So, there is a 1 over k Boltzmann t and a plus and a plus sign because you are differentiating a minus here. Very good. So, and a plus, so we can even write this down plus. So, constant is m over k b t. So, this uh, m goes away. Oh, but remember that when I integrate e to the t prime over tau, I get a tau on top. So, yes. So, there is going to be a tau over k Boltzmann t let us write it properly. So, that is how it gets dragged. 
in the direction of the force. Okay. Leading correction to first order in F. We know the answer should be proportional to F. It's got to be a scalar. And the only other velocity you have is V itself. So it's got to be proportional to F dot V and times this thing here. This gives you the constant of proportionality. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Precisely. F dot V is the rate at which power is supplied to the system, is the rate at which energy is supplied to the system. A work is done on the system by the force. So that is a sort of a very straightforward interpretation. Hmm. Now what is done in transport theory is apart from the complications of solving the Boltzmann equation in various situations hmm. is you remember the collision invariance we talked about one and then the velocity itself which gave the momentum current and then the energy current itself. So what one does is to take each of these currents and from that one can extract transport coefficients such as the shear modulus, the thermal conductivity, the electrical conductivity, etc. Diffusion coefficient we have already extracted, etc. So you have to construct you can even construct the heat current, the th thermal conductivity because there is a mechanical portion which is the moment of uh, all, all these things depend on taking this fellow here, an integral of V times F of RVT times some something here, some function of V as I put it. These are the currents. And if this follows 1, you got the momentum current. If this was kinetic energy, half mv squared, you got the energy current and so on. So you take uh, half mv squared minus the average value, 3 halves kT or something like that and that gives you the heat current. You can go one step further and say, I will find out what thermal conductivity is, what is the heat conduction equation. You can derive Fourier's law for the heat conduction equation here within linear response theory by using this local equilibrium approximation. You say that the temperature is different at different places but in a very mild way. So you write T as a function of R itself, then the derivatives are going to, spatial derivatives will act on that T and in that manner you will end up with Fourier's law of heat conduction which essentially says delta capital T over little t, partial little t is minus the thermal conductivity times del square of t. You can get that in. You get a, f actually you get a formula for the heat current which says it is proportional to the temperature gradient. That is what will emerge automatically from this, okay and so on. So I am going to call a halt to this portion of it which is uh, a kinetic theory really. And we go on now to a very current topic, well it has been current for a while but uh, it is still a very crucial one, namely we will do dynamic critical phenomena next. For that we will start with uh, some notions of equilibrium critical phenomena, second continuous phase transitions, talk about um, mean field theory and then we will see how time dependence comes in. in here. So that is the next thing we take up. <coughs>